How you doing? Welcome. Period six. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be able to tell how many shirts I actually have based on the videos. I have four shirts in my name. This is my favorite color. Why is this my favorite color? It's white. Because that's your color. No? I can't make a decision. This is white is all the colors. Roy G. Biv. So this is all the colors. You get it? That's not a joke. Okay, now. But first the bell. My life is run by bells. Bells are over. Now, this is part two of the video that the lab is about. Forces in two dimensions, colon, Newton's laws of motion. That's the lab we're doing. This is part two. We did part one over there with the apparatus. So we have a ramp. And the ramp is two dimensions. And there's a cart on the ramp. And that cart is represented by mass one. The cart is represented by mass one. And then I have that cart connected by a cord, a string with tension to mass two. Now, this looks similar to the problem we did with the 16 kilogram mass here, pulling the eight kilogram mass up the ramp and accelerating. Now, as I said over there, the difference is this, that I placed on this hanger, mass hanger, just enough mass so that this overcame the coefficient of friction. Okay? So then, I found that mass one was 648 grams or 0 .648 kilograms. And on the hanger, I had 284 grams, which is 0 0.284. Clear? Okay, now, let's look at the free body diagram. I have the tendency of that, that car to roll down. That's the weight of the cart that's parallel with the plane, FP. I have the friction, which I don't know yet, but I know that there's friction there. There's always friction. And I'm going to actually calculate the friction. Correct? Easy? Okay. I have, I can calculate the Fn and the Fw1, which is based on mass 1, and then Fw2, which is mass 2. Now, unlike the problem with the two masses, one which is accelerating the other, Fw2 will be the same thing as the tension. They're equal. Okay? I know there's no movement. It's just, it could move, but it's not moving, right? So, What's the net force? Zero. zero. Who said that? Excellent. It's zero, right? Ah! Zero. Okay? Now, so then this is true. F net equals this tension plus the parallel force plus the friction. That equals zero. The net force is zero. I measured with this. Saw a movie about Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg, and the Confederate troops were shelling the Union lines just before Pickett's Charge. And the, the soldier, the Confederate soldier who was kind of in charge, he was actually a very famous artillerist years ago. He had 
something like this. And he could measure the angle of trajectory. So that he put that on a cannon barrel, and that would tell you what the angle is of the cannon. You see that? Simple as this. If I put it maybe a straw here, very high tech, I could measure the inclination of a star or the moon or some celestial body. Easy, very high tech. Yeah. So with this, I measured the angle and I measured it to be 25 degrees. Yes? So what I want you to do, and I'll make it a part three, is I want you to fill everything in. I want you to actually come up with the coefficient of friction. That's the lab. What is the coefficient of friction? Do you remember? Coefficient of friction equals the force of friction over the normal. Okay? So you can have the normal here. You have the normal here. You can subtract this. You're going to subtract from the net, you're going to subtract the FT and FP, right? Don't forget, don't get, don't get confused with the sign, right? That's zero. Remember that? Yes, so you want, to, you want to actually calculate friction, and then the coefficient of friction is the friction divided by the normal. Excellent. Morgan's back. Excellent. She looks great. Looks great. Kayla had detention yesterday. You don't know who that is, but she's a very nice person. I gave her detention for being late. Okay? You want to do it, and we'll come back. Okay? Have a good day.